Welcome to Elevate Church. Before we get started today, we'd like to hear from you. If you've been impacted in any way by Elevate, we want to hear about your story. Please email us at mystory@elevatepeople.tv. Thanks and enjoy the message. presence of God is sweet, isn't it? It is so good. The Holy Spirit is in this place. And if it's your first time with Elevate, today's a little bit different of a service. And we're going to stay in this attitude of worship. And um, Tuesday morning, about 5.15 a.m., I woke up wide-eyed. That never happens for me. But the Holy Spirit woke me up and showed me exactly what to do this morning. And uh, we've been in this series in between miracles. Many of, many of you know that. And we've been basing it off the scripture, James 1, 2 through 4, that when troubles come your way, consider it an opportunity. Right? Consider it an opportunity for great joy for when your faith is tested your endurance has a chance to grow so let it grow and you'll be perfect and complete needing nothing because we know that God is the miracle working God but we're waiting on that miracle to happen again on our lives and it hasn't happened quick enough it hasn't happened soon enough in our job our marriage our our health our we know God is real we don't know what to do and so today really feel like the Holy Spirit instructs us to stay in this attitude of worship. And I'm going to teach very shortly, and then we're going to dive right back into worship and prayer. We're going to have a time of prayer, an altar call in every way. And in other words, I just truly believe that it's not the lack of your faith. It's just maybe you just need a little a shot of endurance today. Maybe a little shot of energy. Anybody need a little shot of energy today and endurance and say you can make it, you can do it? Because the miracle is on the way. And that's kind of the direction that I want to go today. So I'm asking that you stay in the attitude of worship. If it's, if it's your first time, I promise I, I like to cut up and have a, have a good time. And we have a blast here at Elevate. Today is a little bit more serious driven because I'm very passionate. I believe God is going to move. Amen? Amen? Holy Spirit is up in this place. Let me just read this. And we'll pray and you can be seated and we'll... I'll just talk for a little bit. Ecclesiastes 8 verse 6 says this, For there is a time and a way for everything, even when a person is in trouble. If you came in here today in the midst of something, there's a time and place for everything. But how many know a promise is a promise? Amen? And that's what it's all about. And today we're going to talk about the time my message is called Bring the Rain. Bring the rain, because we're gonna, I'm going to read a story about a book of a legend by the name of Honey. He was a legend of the circle maker, and the circle maker, he was a great man. He, he, there was a drought in the land, and he drew a circle and said, I will not move, God, until you bring the rain. I will not move from this place. I will worship and I will pray until you bring the rain. Just like the people in Jericho, they circled seven times, right? And they shouted for the miracle that God had already given them. So I don't know about you, but circle making gets God's attention. And it's time that we just simply set ourselves up in a way to I believe that God is gonna bring more rain in here today. More rain is just simply more prayer, more worship, more confidence, more endurance to believe God for what he's already wanted to give you. Can I get an amen in that? Anybody with me in the house? So we're gonna stay in this attitude of worship. Father, we thank you for this time. We thank you for your word. We thank you for this moment. Holy Spirit, speak. I'm just simply your mouthpiece. Do what you do. Touch every heart and soul that is here today, God. We thank you for it. We glorify you for it, God. 
in advance. Move in a mighty way. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said? Amen. 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 Give somebody the Fresh Prince before you sit down. You know what I'm talking about? Right? Okay. Give it two people and take a seat. Ain't nobody did it. I'm a white boy. I ain't got no rhythm. I can do it. So he's going to continue to play. Nick is. And we're going to stay in this attitude of worship. So stay with me if you're, if it is your first time with us. We have in the middle of the aisles, we have notes that you can write down and follow along with what I'm saying. We, we are, uh, I'm definitely, a, I'm a techie. I got the iPhone, the iPad. I got three different cases for this. One for preaching, one for lounging, and one for studying. You know, I'm a crazy techie, but there's just something about coming to church where I'm a little bit old school, man, where I bring my Bible and I take notes. Can I get a witness in the house? Bring your Bibles to church. I want to begin to share a story. If you want to put a bookmark in Leviticus chapter 26, it's going to be the main text of what we're going to read today, Leviticus chapter 26. Like I said, I'm not going to be very long. And I just came here to kind of challenge you in a couple of areas. And then we're going to pray. If anything, our assignment today is me as your pastor and, our, and the worship team, our team, is to agree with you on even a higher level for the thing and the miracle that you need to take place in your life. As simple as your job, as simple as uh, your health, as simple as your marriage, as simple as a relationship, as simple as making an A on the test, my teenagers in the house. I pray for A's, <laughs> it didn't happen, but, but here's the deal, anything and everything is what's gonna take place today. Y'all with me? I wanna start off by reading a story to you and then I'll wrap up that story at the very end, as I told you about a man by the name of Mahoney, he was known as the legend of the circle maker. And here's the beginning of his story, what's gonna set up, talking about today, bring the rain. Somebody shout, bring the rain. It says this, young children danced in the downpour like it was the first rainfall they'd ever seen. And it was. Parents threw back their heads and opened their mouths and caught raindrops like they were like they were there, and they were. When it hasn't rained in more than a year, raindrops are like diamonds falling from the sky. I mean, you know when you're stuck in that in-between miracle zone, right? And you see a glimpse of that miracle, you, you grab on to that miracle, right? It's precious. It would be forever remembered as the day the day thunders clapped and applauded the Almighty, the day puddle jumping became an act of praise, the day that the legend of the circle maker was born. It was the first century BC and a devastating drought threatened to destroy a generation. A generation before Jesus, the last of the Jewish prophets had died off nearly four centuries before. How many know this is an in-between miracle zone, 400 years of not seeing a miracle take place? I don't know if any of us can identify with that. That's a long time. So it was in this time and miracles were such a, actual, were such a distant memory that it seemed like a false memory. And God was nowhere to be heard. But there was one man, somebody shout, one man. There was one man, an eccentric sage, an outcast, a misfit, who lived outside the walls of Jerusalem, who dared to pray anyway. His name was Honey. And even if the people could no longer hear God, he believed that God could still hear him. When the rain is plentiful, it's an afterthought. But when you're in a drought, it's the only thought. And Honey was their only hope, famous for his ability to pray for rain. It was on this day, the day, that Honey would earn his reputation. With a six-foot staff in his hand, he began drawing like a math compass. Uh, his circular movement was rheumatical. It was methodical. 90 degrees here, 170 degrees here, 180 degrees here, 360 degrees here. He began to draw on the dirt with his staff. He never looked up as the crowd looked on. After what seemed like hours had only been seconds, when he stood inside the circle he had drawn, then he dropped to his knees and he raised his hands to heaven with the authority of the prophet Elijah who called down from heaven. He began to call down rain. And this is what Honey shouted 
He said, Lord of the universe, Daddy God, I swear before your great name that I will not move from this circle until you have shown mercy on your children, until you have brought this rain. The word sent shudder down the spines of those who were within earshot that day. It wasn't just the volume of his voice, but it was the authority in his faith and in his tone. Not a hint of doubt. This prayer didn't originate with the vocal cords. It was supernatural. Like water from our artesian well, the words flowed from the depth of his soul. His prayer was so resolute, yet humble, confident, yet meek, expectant, yet unassuming. Then it happened as his prayer ascended into the heavens, raindrops began to descend into the earth, an audible gasp just swept across the thousands of congregants that have now encircled Honey around the place, seeing what's going to take place. They couldn't deny how real this was. The people rejoiced over each drop, but Honey was not satisfied with the sprinkle. He said, still kneeling within the circle, Honey lifted up his voice again, and he sounded to heaven, and he shouted, not for such rain have I prayed, but I prayed for rain that will fill pits and valleys and caverns for these people. It's the rain I'm praying for. Then sprinkles all of a sudden turned into a torrential downpour that eyewitnesses say no raindrop was smaller than egg size. It rained so heavily, it rained so steadily that the people had to flee to the Temple Mount to escape the flash floods. How many know when our God wants to bless somebody, he doesn't just give you enough, he gives you more than enough, amen? And he continued to pray and then he prayed one more bold request. This is kind of where we get into to bring the rain, and what we're going to go into for worship and altar call at the end. He says this, he shouted, not for such rain have I prayed, but I have prayed for rain of your favor, your blessing, and your graciousness. That's what I pray. Then like a proportioned sun shower on a hot, humid August afternoon, it began to rain calmly, peacefully, each rain drop was a tangible token of God's grace. And they didn't just soak the sin, the skin. They soaked the spirit with faith. It had been difficult to believe the day before the day, the day after the day, but it was impossible now not to believe. And the legend of Honey the Circle Maker stands forever as a testimony to how the power of one prayer can change the course of history. One prayer, one bold statement to believe God for what you need. To say, I'm not gonna move from this place, God, until you bring the rain in my life. That's what we're gonna talk about today. Now I wanna back it up with a word. Look at Leviticus chapter 26. Y'all still with me? Look at Leviticus chapter 26, starting with verse 1. It says this, Do not make idols or set up carved images or sacred pillars or scriptured stones in your land so you may worship them. I am the Lord your God. You must keep my Sabbath days of rest and show reverence for your sanctuary. I am the Lord. If you follow my decrees and are careful to obey my commands. I will, somebody shout, I will. I will send you the seasonal rains. The land will not yield its crops and the trees of the field will produce their fruit. And then it goes in to talk about the three seasons that we as a believer and an unbeliever go through. And it goes on to say, your threshing season will overlap with your grape harvest. And your grape harvest will overlap with the season of planting grain. You will eat your fill and live securely in your land. And when you see this right here, what it is saying is that the blessing is the rain. The miracle is the land. The miracle is the promise in your life. The miracle that you're believing for. And he's saying here, if you do this, 
You'll go through these seasons, but when you do, this is the blessing, the miracle that I'm going to bring you. You see it starting with verse 6. And every time you see I will, he says, if you obey my commands, you'll go through the season of rain, and I will give you peace in the land. And you will be able to sleep with no cause for fear. I will rid the land of wild animals and keep your enemies out of your land. And this is where you go, verse 7, from faithless to faithful. And this is where it gets exciting. If I can get a church full of people like number 7, man, we can rock this world. We can change this city. It says, in fact, you will chase down your enemies and slaughter them with your swords. Five of you will chase a hundred, and a hundred of you will chase 10,000. Ooh, what if we had a church of a bunch of fearless, faithful people who want to stand in agreement to believe to reach this community, stand in agreement to help one another? And he goes on to say, I will look favorably upon you, making you fertile and multiplying your people, and I will fulfill my covenant with you. You were such, you will have such a surplus of crops that you will need to clear out the old grain to make room for the new harvest. That not only is spiritual, but I think it's physical in every way. In our marriage, in our family, in our businesses, in our calling, in this church. And then he goes on to say my favorite verse, verse number 11 and 12. I will live among you and I will not despise you. I will walk among you because I will be your God you will be my people. You will be my people. Somebody say, bring the rain. You see, a promise is a promise. When God says he's going to promise you something, it's going to come to pass. If God didn't need it, Jesus wouldn't have died for it. But if he died for you, then he must need you. You fit the miracle. Just because trouble has come your way, maybe you've backslidden, maybe you've messed up, maybe you went back into the streets, maybe you've been far away from God, that doesn't count you out from the miracle. We fit the miracle. We say this all the time, we all stuck on stupid, man, right? Just for some of you history buffs in the house, if you're curious, you go back and study Leviticus 26, 1 through 12, the words, I will, is actually mentioned 21 times. 21 times in that. And our God doesn't make a mistake. And I just thought about that, and I began studying it. And did you know that the uh, children of Israel, when they were in the wilderness, they rebelled 21 times? Then, then it says in 2 Timothy chapter 3, Paul talks about 21 different sins of an exceeding wickedness that we as people go through. You know why I think it was significant that there was 21 I wills? Because how many know when God gets ready to come up in your life, he don't just take a piece out. He just don't take five things out. How many know he takes it all out? Amen. And he's looking for that. Now, in verse 5, talks about different seasons that me and you will go through. There's different seasons that we will go through. It says, your threshing season will overlap with your grape harvest, and your grape harvest will overlap with the season of planting grain. You will eat your fill and live securely in your land. Everything I say today, understand Right, we, we live in a world to where we got the natural and we got the supernatural. Everything that I read today, seasons, applies naturally in our lives, in our jobs, in our workplace, in our businesses, in our homes and everything. And then there's the spiritual aspect to it as well. You gotta understand the two exist. So as I'm talking about natural truths and facts in the Bible and different th facts and maybe some little things I've studied in the encyclopedia and things that I'm going to bring to you, see and discern the spiritual truths within it. That makes sense? Because five different seasons, or there's three different seasons that he says we will go through. And he says a farmer, a new believer, a farmer, the threshing season is the hardest day for a farmer. 
It's one day, threshing season is one day. For me, that excites me. <laughs> a one day season, how I many know that's good in the house, right? I'll take one day seasons all day, every year, week, whatever it is, okay. But a threshing season is the hardest day for a farmer. Why? Because a farmer wants to have land. He wants to have fields of crops. And this is the very first time where he picks a field and he steps out on faith to plant the seed to believe that the harvest will grow. Now, whether this is a new farmer or whether it's a seasoned farmer, your seasoned farmer may have 10 fields, but then they buy another field. They have to put out the same amount of faith for the new field as they did when they started in the beginning. Some of the hardest times to pursue our dreams and the things that we're trying to believe for and the miracles. This threshing season is the hardest season because you're trying to get the seed on the inside of you to grow. It's a tough season. It's the hardest season. To say yes to the call of God in your life, to say yes to pick up and move when God is telling you to move, but you got your comfort zone right here. You got a good salary, you got a good job, you got a good you got a good situation going on, but God is calling you here. It's tough. It's not easy. You got to follow God's will. Then it goes into the grape harvest season. This is the most crucial season for the farmer. Man, hear the spiritual truth in this. Weather can literally shape the outcome and the timetable of the harvest. Whether we have rain or no rain can cause a crop to grow quicker or prolong it longer to grow. The storm and weather can shape the harvest. But listen, please hear this. What's absolutely amazing, we look at storms that come in our lives as negative and bad. And yeah, there's storms that come sometimes in the winds, they knock us down and it don't feel good. We don't ever like to go through a storm, but a storm is actually the most powerful thing for a farmer. Because whenever a storm comes to a farmer and they have a bunch of plants in the field, you know what a storm does? A storm exposes the vine diseases within the plants to show the farmer what needs to be plucked out and what needs to be cured. Do you see the spiritual truth in this? So when you're going through a storm in your life, don't look at it as a setback, but simply a set up because all a storm is designed to do is to expose the things in your life of the things you know you need to heal, the things you need to pluck out, the addiction you need to get rid of, the hatred you need to get rid of, the jealousy you need to get rid of, the lifestyle you need to change. Am I talking to anybody in the house? This threshing season is to expose the things that we know we need to get rid of. There's things you need to get rid of just because your marriage is going in a way that you don't like. It doesn't mean you pluck it out and get out. There's some things you get out. There's some things you treat and you heal. It's a threshing season. Then you're going into the planting grain season. This is the fun season. This is the season where, this is the season of profit. This is the season of overflow. This is the season of blessing. This is when life gets fun. When you see the fruit of what you've gone through. But here's the deal, you won't get to where you're gonna get, you won't get to the planting season until you deal with this hurt and this pain that you're going through because hurt people hurt people. Where do you fit in this today? Then, let me real quickly break down to you what rain means. It's really cool. Go back and look it up in the dictionary sometime or the encyclopedia. Again, hear the, hear the spiritual truths within this. Rain. Rain is created because of moisture in the atmosphere, is it not? It's created because of an atmosphere, but enough moisture and upward motion is present. Participation, participation, precipitation and rainfall can't help but come down. That's why I wanted to stay in this attitude of worship. 
Worship is our response to God's awesomeness, right? We worship him. We lift him higher. I want to stay in this attitude of worship so we don't go down at all. We just keep climbing. We keep climbing. We keep climbing. And that's why we're going to get back up here in a second. We're going to worship. We're going to pray. Because my job today is that whatever kind of prayer life you came in here with today, we're going to take it to the next level. What kind of worship level you came in today, we're going to take it to the next level. Anybody want to go to the next level in the house? But you got to create the atmosphere for rain. You got to create the atmosphere for rain in your life to make it present. Listen to this, what the encyclopedia says, it's amazing. In mountainous areas, heavy participation is possible when there's an upward flow that is maximized. Deserts exist, dry lands exist because of a downward slope which causes heating and drying in areas in life. Can you see the spiritual truth in that? When you're facing a mountain, when you're in a valley, is rain possible? Is a miracle possible? You better believe it as long as your attitude, your prayer, your worship, your lifestyle is on an upward flow. Not just once a week. If you're just living for Sundays, you're missing it out. You're missing out. Sunday mornings is simply a catapult to push you out Sat Monday through Saturday to reach people, talk Jesus. We just come together and have fun on Sundays, but this ain't what it's about. You won't see the fruit. You won't see the season a blessing if you just live for Sundays. You won't see it. But if you're facing a mountain, we got to keep this upward flow going to find the miracle. But things get hot, right? When things get hot in this world, uh, hot, hot, when things are hot in this world, it creates moisture in the air, which brings precipitation, right? When things get hot, like I am right now, my skin's got a bad leak in it. What do we do? We sweat, right? So when things get hot, when things get heavy, when things get situated and you begin to sweat, it's all right. You're just creating moisture in the atmosphere, setting it up for rain to come up in your life. Am I talking to anybody today? Come on. Don't be afraid if you begin to sweat. You're just setting the atmosphere in motion because you're right around to the miracle. Many times God comes through at the very point that you want to give up. When rain hits, it gives a seed a chance to grow. Listen to me. I'm going to say this. I'm going to read one last thing, and we're going to worship and we're going to pray. This is important that you get this this morning. Different seeds need different amounts of rain. Different seeds need different amounts of rain. A cactus plant only needs a couple of inches of rain to be birthed and to sustain life. But a plant in the tropical jungle, in the rainforest, can only be birthed and survived if hundreds of inches of rain come throughout the year. So here's my job to you. Here's my, you got to get this, church, is that whenever something's coming your way, and word me, you haven't seen the miracle. You're stuck in this in-between miracle zone. You haven't seen the breakthrough in your finances. You haven't seen the breakthrough in your marriage. You haven't seen the breakthrough in your family. You haven't seen the breakthrough in your business. Wherever you haven't seen the breakthrough, it's not your lack of faith. You just need more rain. Don't let anybody tell you. I've, I've been told this. When I haven't seen things happen for me, have more faith, brother. It ain't my lack of faith. You just need more rain. You just need more rain. You just need to pray a little bit longer. You just need to worship a little bit longer. You just need to read a little bit more. Because a promise is a promise, and a seed will have a chance to grow. Did you know I love watching the documentary Planet Earth? Did you know there's a particular part in this world, I'm going blank on it because this is just off cuff. There's a certain desert in the world that it only rains every 30 years. 
and there's, a, there's seeds there. But how many know that when that rain comes, that seed does grow? It will grow. There's a certain, if you heard of the bamboo tree, the bamboo tree seed, many of you heard this, is in the ground for six years, am I right? Six years? Might be off on the years there. I'm just going, like I said, off cuff. Six years. On that seventh year, overnight, the thing grows like six, seven feet tall. Was it the lack of faith? Just needed more rain. Can we all stand together? If you need a miracle in your body and your family member has been healed, you don't know why God has not healed you yet. It's not because God doesn't love you. It's not because of your lack of faith. You just need more rain. You just need more rain. And I want to close this out with the charge of a prayer that we're going to have our prayer team come. And it's going to be a moment for you to respond to prayer, altar call, and worship. We just want to stand in agreement with you that your miracle is on the way, that it's right around the corner. Y'all with me? Listen to this. I hope this fires you up like it fires me up. It says this, bold prayers honor God, and God honors bold prayers. God isn't offended by your biggest dreams or your boldest prayers, but he is offended with anything less. If your prayers aren't impossible to you, then they are insulting to God. Why? Because they don't require divine intervention. But ask God to part the Red Sea. Ask him to make the sun stand still or have him float the iron axe head and God is moved by omnipotent action. There is nothing God loves more than keeping a promise, a, a promises, answer prayers, performing miracles, and fulfilling dreams. That is who he is and that is what he does. The bigger the circle we draw, the better because he gets the glory, the greater the moments in life are the miraculous moments when human impotence and divine omnipotence intersect. And they intersect when we draw a circle around the impossible situation in our lives and they invite God to intervene. I promise you this, God is ready and waiting. So while I have no idea what circumstances you find yourself in, I'm confident that you are only one prayer away from your dream fulfilled, your promise kept, and your miracle being performed. But listen, it is absolutely imperative that you get this in the depth of your soul, is that God is for you. If you don't believe that, then you'll pray small, timid prayers. If you do believe it, then you'll pray big, audacious prayers. In one way or another, your small, timid prayers or your big, audacious prayers will change the trajectory of your life and turn you into two totally different people. Prayers are prophecies. They are best predictions of your spiritual future. Who you are is determined by how you pray. Ultimately, the transcript of your prayers becomes the script for your life. Somebody shout, bring the rain. Say it again, bring the rain. I know it sounds silly. Here, help me out this, Jay. And there goes the bottle. There goes the rain. <laughs> Listen, can y'all do something with me? It's going to seem very cheesy. But our daddy God is into circle making. Do I got any people in the house that want to stand firm? That want to stand strong and say, you ain't going to move until your daddy God comes through. I got anybody in the house that wants to agree with me at that? Get a little bit excited. So this is what we're going to do. It's cheesy as all get out. But just go like this. 
We can do it for Nick because he's playing. Stand in agreement with each other. I know it's cheesy, right? Okay, y'all done that. Some of y'all are like coming across. <laughs> you drawing everything, right? I need a lot of help. Each toe. All right. So, here's the deal, right? We draw in a circle. We're standing right here, right now. There is nothing left out. There is nothing broken. There is nothing that's going to get in this spot. The devil does not exist in the circle that is surrounded in my life. The devil, you do not have authority in my life. I declare victory. Bring the rain. Come on, if you believe it, let's pray. And we're going to go into a time of worship. I need my prayer partners at the front. We're going to have a time of worship. We're going to have a time of altar call. We're going to have, this is for you. Let us agree with you. Let us pray with you. If you want to get through a certain season, if you need a miracle in your life, take your prayer level to the next level. Take your worship to the next level. We're going to worship together, and we're going to go out with a bang. But this is your moment. This is your time. Let's shoot our hands to heaven. Heavenly Father, we glorify you. We thank you, Daddy God, for who you are. We declare right now in Jesus' name that whatever anybody came in here with today, whether it's a broken heart, whether it's a depressed spirit, God, whether it's a broken disease, Father, that's trying to threat their body and take their life, Lord God, whether it's the threat of divorce, whether it's the threat of a broken family, Lord God, whatever it may be, whether it's the threat of a court case, Lord God, I don't know what is up in this place, but Father God, we agree in Jesus' name. We draw a circle around our lives, and we are going to stand in faith, and we are going to stand in agreement, Lord God. We are not going to move until you bring the rain in our lives, God. We thank you for our freedom. We thank you for our health. We thank you for deliverance in our lives. God, help us capture this moment. And then our bold prayers, our bold innocent, and our bold worship by us lifting our voice and hitting this altar call saying, I want all of you. God, I thank you, and I know that the miracle of the promise in every person's lives right here today, that they will have the faith and the courage to continue to believe that the promise and the miracle is there. You just need more rain. Maybe a little bit more time, but it's going to happen. It's going to happen. Marriages are going to get back together. Families, fathers, sons, daughters, and parents, they're going to be reunited. Don't give up on your kid. I know they're running from the Lord right now. But don't give up on them. They just need more rain. They just need more rain. They need more rain. Don't give up on your marriage. You just need more prayer. You just need more worship. Get on your knees more. Read your Bible more. Worship a little bit louder. Close yourself off in the car, wherever you got to go to get out of the atmosphere. Just get worship in your spirit. Get word in your spirit. Just pray a little bit more. You just need more rain. You just need more rain. Let us agree with you today. If you need prayer, now's the time. And if you're not here, enter into this time of worship. We're going to sing a few songs, and then we're going to go out. In Jesus' name we pray. Let's sing this together. See no weapon formed against me shall prosper. Oh no, say it won't work. And no weapon that's formed against me shall prosper say it won't and no weapon formed against me shall prosper oh, say it won't work cause my God will do what he said he will do Say no. 
Come on, church, lift your hands, dig into this. Shout it out one more time. No weapon. I mean, nothing can come against you. It's not near as powerful as what's in you. Father, I just thank you for this moment. Thank you for every person that is here, God. Thank you for the dreams and the callings in their life, Father. The transitions that are happening in their lives, Father, Lord God. Father, I just pray for peace. I pray for clarity, Lord God. Lord God, to know that they have the strength and the faith to know that you're in control. Lord God, I just thank you for Every person here, Father, I pray that whatever area in their life that needs to go to the next level, Lord God, I pray that we learn to pray harder. We learn to worship more, Lord God. We have audacious faith to believe that you are capable of doing anything and everything. Because we, you are our God. And we are your people. Have you ever just hit somebody? Have you ever just talk, taken a second to think about it? How valued do you feel when your parents are honored to call you son and daughter? That feeling is exactly how your heavenly father feels when you say yes to what he sent you in this world to do. God is good, isn't he? God is good. What we're going to do right now is my prayer partners are going to go back and hang out. And if you, this altar call is still here. You can hit it. Do whatever you want. But what I would like to do, we're a big believer in the culture of worship here at Elevate. And what we believe in doing is when God, worship is our response to God's awesomeness. We worship because he's about to do some, something awesome. And then when he has done something awesome, we worship him. Come on, y'all with me in the house? And so let me ask you this. The power of God is here. The Holy Spirit is moving. There's a sweet spot that's taking place. We got two more songs we want to sing. And I'm going to challenge you to take it to another level. Take it to another level. Dance a little. Shout a little. Raise your hand a little. Set the atmosphere for rain in your life. Can I get an agreement on that? Anybody want to worship just a little bit more? Our God is great. The great I am. Let's dig into this. Let's get excited. It's fun to serve Jesus. It's fun to serve his church. Come on, somebody. How many know it's fun to see dreams come true and miracles take place? That's what it's all about, reaching this community, reaching this city. Souls, souls, souls. It's what it's all about. Father God, we thank you for this time of worship. We glorify you. In Jesus' name we pray. Let's worship a little bit, church. Come on, get excited and put your hands together. Let's go.
the mountains shake before you, the demons run and flee. At the mention of your name, King of Majesty, there is no power in hell or in Somebody say, God is good. Say, He is great. Has anybody had an encounter with the Most High God this morning? Come on, lift your voice to the Lord one last time. Father, we honor you. We glorify you. We glorify you. Thank you, Lord. Our God is so faithful, guys. He's so faithful. He's so faithful. I want to talk to you just for a few moments real quick before we dismiss. We're so thankful that if it's your first time with us at Elevate, we hope that today you, you felt like family. And we hope that you did enjoy your experience. But our prayer is always that you have an encounter with the Most High God. And I believe that today as we come together and as we gather, not in the name of Elevate, not in the name of anybody else, but the name of Jesus, that we're molded, that we're shaped to look and sound and act more like Him. Amen. Amen. So we're so thankful you were with us today. And I want to remind you, there's that green card in your seat. Please fill it out. And drop it at the giving kiosk on your way out. There's a couple black uh, buckets right there. You can just drop it in one of those. And the other thing I want to tell you about real quick. Next week we're starting a new series called Sun Stand Still. And we're very excited about this series. You want to bring friends. 
This is going to be a series that stretches you, stretches your faith. And so next week, bring a friend with you for this new series, Sun Stand Still. It's going to be great. And then uh, just a reminder for Next Level, those of you, I know we uh, skipped Next Level class last week for Mother's Day, but we're continuing today with a second class for this month. So if you attended the first class, Next Level class, about 10 minutes uh, following this service, we'll continue Next Level over in the education building. So meet me over there in about 10 minutes and we'll continue with that class. And then also, thank you guys for being such faithful givers. Elevate is full of faithful givers. We just see miracle after miracle with what we're able to do in this community because of you guys and your faithfulness. So give yourselves a, a hand clap this morning, amen. So on your way out, we have a giving kiosk and you guys can partner with us and you can be a part of what Elevate's doing in the city of Houston. Let me pray blessing over you before we dismiss this morning. Bow your heads. Father, I'm so thankful, Father, that you are present. I'm so thankful, Lord that we don't have to beg, we don't have to, but Father, we just look to you, and we just call out to you, and you're there, you're there to meet us, you're there to change us, you're there, Father, to love us, and Father, for that, we're so thankful, I thank you, Father, that we commit, Father, to bring the rain, we, Father, we commit, Father, to spend time, uh, to spend time with you, Father, seeking after you, Father, and I believe, Lord, we're going to start to see the miraculous happening in our lives here at Elevate. Father, we thank you for a church where we can come together, a place, a safe place where we can come together to worship and to lift up the name of Jesus. I pray blessing over your people this week, Father, as they go from this place. Let them be a light in the world. Everywhere they go, Father, let their light shine. Prosper them, Father, and I thank you that you take care of them. Always keep them safe, and your blessing is on them. In Jesus' name, and everybody said, Amen, amen, amen. We love you guys. You're dismissed. We'll see you next week. Hey guys, thank you so much for joining us today on our online community here with Elevate Church. I want to challenge you that if you haven't signed up for our mailing list, please do. It's a great way for us to get to know you and for you to get to know us and see all the great things that are happening here in the city of Houston and how we're reaching other people in the community. Also, I want to challenge you, if this ministry has tugged at your heart at all and you want to help us reach more people, I challenge you to go to elevatepeople.tv and hitting the giving tab. Thank you guys so much for joining us today. We love you and we'll see you next week.